I've been wondering recently if one way of thinking about our current situation during the lockdown through the coronavirus pandemic is exile. In the biblical material, exile was a crisis for the nation of Israel, unlike anything they had ever experienced before. This certainly accords with where we find ourselves today. And in exile, the people were cut off from the world that they knew and cherished, just as we are right now. Although it's not a date that may spring readily to mind, like 1066 or 1970, the year of my birth, but the date 587 BC is one that has enormous significance in the pages of the Bible. It was in 587 BC that Judah was defeated by the Babylonian Empire, the Jews were taken off into exile and the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. What had been seen as impregnable suddenly was no more. The three major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, all began their writings around this time. All three reflect in different ways on what led to this catastrophic event. But perhaps most importantly for us today, living in this wilderness period, it is that all three of these prophets also look forward to the end of the exile. In the midst of despair, and certainly in the case of Jeremiah, there's plenty of that, but in the midst of the despair, they all find hope. Ezekiel's writing is full of apocalyptic end time visions and prophecies and therefore helps me throw in some random big words to make me seem clever. A major theme of Ezekiel is the holiness of God, reminding us that however much the world is broken, God is faithful because he cannot be anything else. Hope is found more readily in the book of Isaiah, especially in the passages that refer to the Babylonian captivity from chapter 40 onwards. Here the creativity and majesty of God come to the fore. I love the idea that comes out of key passages like chapter 40, that what the people needed in exile was not a bigger faith in God, but faith in a bigger God. But it is Jeremiah who I want us to think about, especially today. Hope is not always easy to find in Jeremiah, but I promise you it is there or I have chosen a really bad book for this theme today. Jeremiah had a very tough role to play. He even ended up in stocks at one point. Much of the book comes from the turmoil leading up to the exile. <laughs> These sections can be quite unrelentingly bleak. Prior to the exile, Jeremiah's contemporaries were quite happy with life, thank you very much, and so they engaged in denial, self-deception and wishful thinking. Jeremiah was not afraid to tell them how wrong they were. It was rarely well received. This is perhaps captured poetically in Jeremiah's call to be a prophet. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. One of the ways that Jeremiah sought to get his difficult message across was through the use of imagery and symbols. At one time he stands at the door of the temple and uses it as a backdrop. At another time he uses a linen belt, another time at a potter's house, later a basket of figs and then a yoke. One of the best for this video is a clay pot which he took to a prominent place and then smashed to smithereens. But perhaps crucially for our circumstances, when disaster befell the nation of Judah and they were taken off into exile, 
Jeremiah remembered the full extent of his call, not only to pluck up and to pull down, but also to build and to plant. In a book with an abyss of grief, we find resilient hope. But this perhaps is a crucial recognition. What the poetry of Jeremiah offers is not a return to the old world before the exile, but a new future, a new beginning, a new way of being. Jeremiah believed that God is always able to do an utterly new thing which goes beyond our understanding. This surely is a message that we need today. One of the most well-known passages from Jeremiah comes from chapter 31. It's one of the set readings for our covenant service, but I believe it takes on a more poignant tone in the despair of exile. In these crucial words, Jeremiah writes, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them out of their hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was a husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. In the midst of exile, know this. God is abundantly able and absolutely will bring an end to the pain that we feel during the lockdown. What Jeremiah teaches us is that when that time comes, and I think we can allow ourselves to be excited here, but when that time comes, I hope and I pray it will truly be a bright new dawn, a new future leading us all to a renewed relationship with him. Amen. <laughs>